part of the larger conference that was organized by the Social Justice Center called Retaking the University. Um, and the purpose of the conference was pretty much just to reveal and talk about some of the issues um, present in the system that we deal with, you know, as students, and just get people engaged in discussion and maybe help them get involved more and show them ways that they can become active that they maybe were not aware of before. Um, so, without further ado, I'd like to introduce Laura Fukumoto. positive uh, 
uh, feedback about why are these images being made and why are they being perpetuated. So we know that there are a lot of um, really terrible and cliche tropes, especially about female characters um, in media. So um, I'm going to talk about my friend Laura a lot. I'm also Laura. Everyone's Laura. Um, because I was just talking to her yesterday. She reads scripts and sends them off to a network. And you know, she edits scripts for a living um, for television. And sometimes the female characters will come in and it will be like mid 20s, beautiful brown hair. And the next female character will be mid 20s, beautiful red hair. And the next female character will be mid 20s, beautiful dirty blonde hair. And that's literally the description of the character. And so the question is, partially, like why do these characters keep getting recreated? And why do we keep taking them in? Um, it's really it's quite easy to possibly take in. Um, these messages that um, you uh, aren't always aware that uh, are being portrayed because they're not necessarily a message. So that's my first point about rape culture is that it's extremely subversive. It's not like somebody is standing on a street corner um, with a megaphone yelling, you know, terrible victim blaming statements or uh, you know things about rape culture. And that's what a lot of people who are naysayers of um, of rape culture that it exists um, will say they, they will say that oh well why why would you have to teach people not to rape people who who perpetuate these ideas or or perpetuate um, you know any anything pertaining to this culture of violence that we are completely immersed in um, must be mentally unstable must be an outlier they must be somebody who needs some serious help but. Um, if I want you to take home anything from my rambling today, it's that if you are not actively working against the culture that we have been born into, you are going with it. So with the film industry, um, it is so easy when somebody says, hey, I need you to give me a list of actors fitting this description so I can cast this. And so that person takes that description of tomboy, thin woman. Okay, so who are all the available actors that I know that fit this description? And sometimes that list comes out entirely white. And it goes through a board of people and they say, okay, looks good, looks good, let's contact them, let's contact their agents. And then that's how we get like a 90% white representation on television. Because there isn't somebody actively saying, we want to see diversity on television, so okay, let's try to make it a or let's try to limit the amount of white actors that we see going through. And I mean, I think even representation is a deeper conversation because, like, who has the, the freedom of, uh, you know, I've rambled on about this phrase, but who has the freedom to pursue an acting career or somebody who has somebody else supporting them, usually people of an affluent background who have parents or a significant other with a, a Christian job who can support them in that acting career. As a person making a media living in the arts, I wish I had somebody supporting me right now. So it's like, it is a very privileged position to be a media maker. It's a very privileged position to be someone creating art now or ever. Um, because these are images that masses see. But also, as an artist, I exist and I create what I do, being supported by other people. Um, so I absolutely acknowledge that. So anyway, that was a long thing. Let's get back to the so, if you're not working against it um, actively, if you're not working against rape culture, if you're not working against um, patriarchy, if that's a word that's needed anyone, I don't think so, it's a small group. Uh, if you're not actively working against this, then um, there are certain subversive things, racism, microaggressions, that they are so seeping that even if you are subjected to these things yourself, or even if you are oppressed yourself, um, you might not see those things, and it's not like I'm saying, oh, you should always feel oppressed because of X, Y, Z. I'm not saying that. that. But there are certain things that are invisible that, because of the systems that have been created, um, they work under the surface to boost some people up a little bit and not boost up other people. So, um, last week, I'm going to talk about um, violence in media a little bit. Uh, last week, anecdote time, 
I turned down a screenplay. Um, it was a pain job. I cried about it a little bit because I'm not really in a position to turn down paychecks. And um, I definitely knew it was the right decision. Because in this screenplay, the imagery of violence, there were two characters, a man and a woman, and the imagery of violence was um, enough to make my stomach um, it was sort of like a pseudo Fifty Shades of Grey thing, um, where uh, it was sort of an artist and his muse in the form of a beautiful woman. Um, so they're locked up in this room, and they play out this relationship where he is furiously trying to create this art, and she is hindering him in every way possible, which means like tying him to the bed and doing naughty things to him. It was pretty atrocious. Uh, I don't know how scripts like that even get to production. but. Um, so I'm reading this script, and I was like, okay, he said there's a twist at the end. He said it's not cliche. I was in a meeting with this character, and he said, it turns out it's such a great character. It's a strong female character. Um, and this goes back to how subversive, and this is not subversive at all, but how subversive it is sometimes uh, that we, we do these things. So he, he said it's a strong female character, and after this, female character, who granted was an ethereal, perhaps not real character, but the actor was very much real, the images were very much real. Um, she was called a bitch several times throughout, she was death threatened. It was the image of an abusive relationship. Um, and there was in fact a very graphic scene, which I could not imagine being on set for filming, uh, which is part of the reason why I turned that job down. Um, and so, at the end of it, I said, where's the twist? How is this a strong female character? Um, but it's the exact same story recycled again and again and again. Um, why has this full-grown man, um, I assume he was well-educated, I assume he has great relationships with women, I assume he, um, you know, he has a loving wife, I know that for a fact. I know that he has a daughter. So, why did he feel that this, recreating this image of violence, um, of this abusive relationship, was somehow groundbreaking, was somehow making a comment, um, you know, about something. Change it, it was a game changer somehow to him. Um, and once I questioned him a bit, he couldn't provide me an answer, and he only said that I had deeply misunderstood what he intended by his, his script, and that he was a man under many pressures, and that probably he had not had enough time to fully explain what he meant. But um, anyway, anecdote over, I turned that job down because woof. Um, but uh, it's difficult because when you make media, especially in film, which tends to be a very masculine industry, um, tends to be very uh, money-driven, um, it is hard as the lovely costume designer to sit there and say, why did you make that decision as a writer? Why did you make the decision to have him like violate her? Why did you have to make that decision? So sometimes um, these, uh, these ways in which rape culture is upheld um, is very subversive. So like I was saying before, why do we have to teach people not to rape? Why do we have to teach people to work against the grain instead of just going along with it? And they, you know, why is it sometimes that good intentions don't help at all? Um, it helps a lot to hear from people who are part of these marginalized communities themselves. So um, Dallas Buyers Club has been creating a lot of uh, conversation lately because um, a lot of people believe, and I also agree, that um, perhaps the character played by Jared Leto, who's a trans woman, should have been played by a trans woman. And it's such a simple idea. Or maybe he should have consulted a trans woman in building this character. Um, and instead, uh, the actor did his actor job, and a lot of people said, yeah, he did a great job doing it, and maybe he did. You know, I haven't seen the movie yet, but, um, who movies was tap for that? But um, maybe we need to, as people in positions of power, sit down and listen a little bit more. Um, 
And then definitely, I learned that uh, last semester, um, organizing uh, the march for the campaign group and consent, uh, organizing uh, you know, a bunch of different little events that happened, um, and even in the meetings, running the meetings. It was definitely a steep learning curve to say, okay, I have, a, I have quite a lot of voice. Maybe I need to sit down and hear what other people have to say. Um, okay, maybe we'll wrap this up soon. But um, violence in the media and rape culture on campus. So rape culture on campus specifically. Um, sometimes I wonder why is uh, rape culture and why is the prevalence of rape on campus so high? Um, what is it about? You know, there's, there are tons of articles that are like, oh, well, the presence of alcohol and heavy drinking and people trying to experience and people who don't have support networks. And I mean, you can't blame it on the fact that first years get blackout drunk, that there are intentions long before alcohol issues. Um, and I definitely believe that. It's not, you can't blame it on alcohol. Um, definitely, admissions are lower. Um, but that does not make a dangerous situation, in my opinion. Um, when I was uh, in first year living in residence, and residence is a hotbed for terrible things, um, the level of blatant racism, the level of blatant sexism, the level of assault that I witnessed myself, and just was like, oh, this is just first year, whatever. Like, oh, he's just drunk and pinning her to the bed, and whatever, it's sort of. But um, it was, uh, they were images that because I had seen them before in media, or because it was the idea of, oh, he's just being a boy, whatever, he's just drunk, whatever, um, because there is that sort of, that party culture idea upheld, um, I didn't think to question it, I didn't think to have a problem with it, um, and now looking back, I'm absolutely horrified by some of the things that I did not speak out against. I horrified that um, by some of the things that I said myself. Um, I have said some extremely racist statements against uh, indigenous people in my life, and I severely regret them. They were said in jest, but that doesn't take away the gravity of those statements. Um, and it's, you know, part of me wonders why do why do people make rape jokes? Why do people make these comments like they're they're no big deal, like nobody actually experiences those awful things anymore. And um, you know, that leads us to this paradox. We are either entirely safe in the situations we live in, we have safe homes to go to, we have safe families, or that's all a lie. And some people don't have those safe places, and some people don't have those safe networks, and some people have experienced awful things. And the paradox is it's both at the same time don't know, so why would you assume otherwise? Um, so, I mean, going forward from here, because um, this also, you know, feels very disheartening sometimes, because the film industry is a big beast, and I'm like, okay, how do I dismantle it from the inside, and um, sometimes I'm like, oh, I just want to make strange theater pieces for the rest of my life, and pretty dresses, but there's other things to do. Um, where do we go forward from here? as a community in a university setting, as some of the best educated people in the world. Like, we have so many opportunities to enact change right here and right now. Um, so, like I said before, if you go home with one thing today is if you are not actively working against it to enact change, you are actually going with this very strong tidal wave of the flow that's pushing us forward into everything that we have been taught so far in our lives. Um, we can validate other people, validate other people's voices. So there are a lot of very intelligent people at this university, like it's absolutely daunting sometimes, like the people that you're about to hear speak after me, I'm like, oh, thank God I'm going first, because coming out of that, I feel like, oh. <laughs> um, Validating people and validating people's voices and validating experiences is so important. I can't, I can't even stress that enough. Um, somehow there is this idea that because it's just your feelings, it's not real. Um, but psychological, psychological.
fucking trauma is very real. And the way that it runs down through generations is extremely real. Um, and organized 